hello, welcome, my name is Shelly and today I am bringing you my February wrap up. So, short on time, so let's just uh, dive into uh, the book world, shall we? So I read both Red Rising and Golden Sun, which is book number one, book number two in the Red Rising trilogy, saga, I'm not really sure what, what we're calling it. But it's by Pierce Brown. Red Rising started off great. It has a great, very exciting premise. The main character, Darrow, works under the surface of Mars, helping to terraform the planet for future generations. In this world, castes are differentiated by colour, and Darrow is a red, the lowest of the society, while gold is the highest. Darrow and all the rest of the reds think that Mars is uninhabited, when in fact it had already been colonised for generations and the reds are essentially slaves. So Darrow is eventually, and by eventually I mean quite early on, he is smuggled out and turned into a gold so he can infiltrate their society. So after his transformation he is accepted into a institute of basically elite golds. What happens there is that they are more or less dropped into the wilderness in a kind of Hunger Games kind of a situation and, and it's supposed to weed out all the weaklings. But here's what I'm thinking. They are all golds. They are already supposed to be like the elite. So what is happening? So going into the golden sun as well. Problem I have with Dara, he's basically our cardboard cutout of the perfect person. Uh, basically everything he does wrong, he doesn't really do wrong. It's just wrong for the moment. And then he kind of sets itself right again. It's a bit weird. Uh, he's like the perfect character, even though he's flawed. Not my favourite kind of character. However, the story is very much, uh, y you get into it and you can't really put the book down. When it comes to book number two, there are quite a few plot twists that I definitely did not see coming and it's like, just happened. Yeah. Um, it was a, I didn't want to read it, but I can stop reading it. Uh, I'm definitely going to continue on with the series and uh, see where it all ends up. Next up is This Poison Heart by Kaylin Bayron. So this is about a girl called Breezes, or Bree, and she works in a flower shop with her two mums. She also has this affinity for plants, which makes them kind of seek her out as friends and grow at super speed, like from little seedlings to big pot plants. So when Bree's aunt dies, she is willed this dilapidated estate in rural New York. And Bree and her parents decide that why not just go there for the summer and see see what it's all about. So now she's surrounded by plants in the middle of nowhere and she's like, well maybe she can finally learn to control her gift and figure out what this gift actually is. So soon enough she realizes she is up against a centuries old curse and she must harness her own power to be able to defeat this or at least make it through it. So going in I had no idea that mythology was so prevalent in this story and it could definitely be a bit overwhelming at times when things were explained however it was done in such a interesting way that you just kept like kept wanting to know more of it also apparently it's a secret garden retelling i mean i can sort of see it but I didn't know it. So I obviously really enjoyed this book, although the beginning of it is a bit slow going in and it's not until like the last quarter that you get like the action-y bits. Um, but I am very much excited to read the second book in this series. So uh, can't wait for that one. So 
Continuing on with the mythology, we have Law by Alexandra Bracken. Now, this is my first Alexandra Bracken book. Uh, I have been wanting to read her books for years now, but for some reason, this was the first one I picked up. So, every seven years, the Aegon begins, and it is a punishment for past rebellion. So, nine Greek gods are forced to walk the earth as mortals, where they are hunted by the descendants of ancient bloodlines, all eager to kill a god, to then gain that god's power and immortality. So, in this book, we follow Law, who has fled the brutal world that she has been born into uh, after her family's sadistic murder. Yet as the new Aegon dawns, two participants seek out her help. So first off we have Castor who is a childhood friend, uh, who Law also believed long dead, so mystery. And we also have the gravely wounded Athena, uh, who is the last among the original gods. Interesting. What will happen? Happened. So Athena offers this alliance against their mutual enemy and a way for Law to finally leave the Aegon forever. So I will fully acknowledge that Law will not work for every reader as all other books, but I freaking loved it. It was that kind of book where you wanted to be a sequel or a full-on series, but with the way this one ended, if there were to be another book, it would completely ruin this book. So, awesome standalone. <laughs> I do love a good, like, yes. <laughs> I love this book. Moving on to One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. So, this is about cynical 23-year-old August who has just moved to New York in hope of like leaving her past behind her. So basically August is just looking for like the calm boring life where she'll just work and go to school and that's about it. However, she finds roommates that are not like your average kind of next door kind of person and she just happens to meet this gorgeous amazing girl on the train and it just kind of takes off from there. So August meets Jane on the train which, I don't know, I mean that's perfectly normal. However, Jane is displaced in time so she doesn't just look like that 70s punk rocker, she actually is that 70s punk rocker. So throughout the whole book we go through August trying to help Jane figure out who she is first off and then how to help Jane actually get off the train because she can't leave that train. I thought this book was very cute. Um, it was slow at a lot of points in this throughout the book but this portrayal of found family that they have which is basically they they have every kind of character in this book you have gay bi straight trans i don't know what else there are a lot of words i'm sorry <laughs> it's it's very cute however there are bits where you kind of question how this actually works and how it will eventually lead because there's this point like in the middle somewhere where you go like oh this can't possibly work out in any way shape or form this book is just going to end in the middle of things and we're just going to be like what the fuck but there it was there it is it's cute the chapters are quite long but i do quite like case mcquister's writing style so it's a cute story. Read it if you want to. So uh, then I moved on to some uh, like quick reads, thrillery type of book with uh, The Skylight by Louise Candlish. And so, <laughs> so basically, it's very hard to say what this book is about without actually saying what happens in the book. But this book is about Simone. We follow Simone, and Simone has a secret. She likes to stand at her bathroom window and look down at the neighbor's skylight. Yeah. 
So she basically knows everybody that's coming and going from her neighbours and yeah, she's a bit of a peeping Tom, let's say that. <laughs> Um, basically, she doesn't see anything wrong with sneakily watching your neighbours without them knowing. Okay. <laughs> Until one day, she sees something that uh, she was not expecting. So, for a quick reads book, this was very well written, especially for only 89 pages. You get like a full... You basically get a full novel in this book and you don't usually do that with these quick reads book but you did with this one it was good I would recommend it I would also like to know more but then again you get like a full novel in this book so I don't know so then I read the third and final book in Lainey Taylor's uh, Daughter of Smoke and Bone series so I read Dreams of Gods and Monsters so, since this is the third book, it's going to be very hard to say what happens in this book because that will spoil the whole series. Yeah, so well. But basically, the synopsis for the first book in this series says that it's a story about how a demon fell in love with an angel. So, just going with that, you kind of assume it's like a heaven and hell kind of book, but I know no. It's something entirely different, but you know, there are kind of demons and angels around, but you're gonna have to read it to find out. So this series as a whole definitely had its coming and going kind of moments for me. Um, it's, it's a very interesting series, I will say that. However, I'm not sure they needed to be like this thick and three of them. Um, I think there would have been a lot of things that I would have liked to cut out but I didn't write the book and I didn't edit the book either so <laughs> uh, I do really like the series though so it's probably one I might reread in the future just not right now because a lot of books I want to be reading so the final book I have to talk about is our Chaos Corp Book Club of the Month pick, which was actually my pick, and it is a uh, Round Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. So when I picked this book, I did not know what it was about. Basically, we said pick a sci-fi or fantasy book, and I happen to have this one here. <laughs> I bought it because it was Victoria Aveyard, and I wanted to read more of her books since I I kind of liked the Red Red Queen series, even though I thought it was a bit too drawn up but that's that's a topic for another day so basically I believe this is going to be a trilogy so this is the first book in that series let's just say that and it follows an unlikely group of heroes who must band together in order to save the world Basically what we get in this book is non-stop action betrayals, a diverse cast of characters, plot that just pulls you along whether you want it to or not. Um, it doesn't have a lot of romance, which I know a lot of people have like sort of complained about, but I do think that we have a lot of hints for books to come. With what will happen in that. I don't think Victoria Aviard will write a series that doesn't have any romance whatsoever. It doesn't seem likely, so that's where we're getting. I will say this though, um, because we follow different perspectives, I had a hard time actually getting into the story and it wasn't until like the characters sort of meet up and are in the same place that I was like, okay, I get it now. Um, I might be stupid, but there you go. <laughs> I don't care. So that was my September wrap up. Uh, it was a bit crap. I'm a bit crushed for time filming this and I don't know what I've been saying. So this shall be an interesting edit for me. Yay. <laughs> I apologize.
So thank you so much for watching. Do all the things and I shall see you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh,